Hey everyone. In this video, I'm going to be talking about how our first week of school went for my little first grader. I would say that overall, everything has gone really good. I've only had to make a couple changes to our schedule. Um, so we did start on Monday and it was really exciting and fun because uh, that's the day that I kind of set everything up. I've kind of been making it a tradition where I buy a lot of books at the beginning of the school year. And so I'll just set it up on a table for him. So there's a lot of picture books and chapter books. I actually have a Amazon haul where I listed all the books. And so if you haven't seen that, I'll put the cards here if you want to watch that. Um, but basically a lot of his grade level books and then some a little above grade level for like read alouds. So I set all that up for him and then I also gave him his own personal gift. He's really sporty and he loves baseball. I got him, it's like a pitch machine where you can put the balls, which are not real baseballs. They're like little plastic balls. And after a little bit of a few seconds go by, they'll pitch the next ball. It's a little cheapy, you know, that it's real plasticky. But so far it's been working great. Uh, usually he would get a ball and he would kind of bounce it. So I figured I could get him this just to kind of level up his practice so he doesn't have to bounce the ball, but he can, you know, get pitched to um, without me having to be out there all the time. He can go out there whenever he wants and do that and practice. So that was his personal gift. But back to the way I set everything up, I just kind of laid out all the books on a table and then kind of let him look through it. And I also blew up some balloons because I just, because of his age and just knowing how he is, I knew that was something I would give it that extra touch. And of course he was playing with those, you know, so he was really excited about the balloons. Then I was really excited about what I purchased as well was a Yodo player. If you don't know what that is, it's also in the Amazon haul video but it's like this like little box speaker. It's a speaker and you put cards in it. You have to purchase the individual cards. Sometimes there's like a set where it could be like educational. Like in my case, I got one about planets. I got one about the solar system. I got one about inventors. It can also be novels and um, chapter books, a series, which I also got him. So that was a huge hit, you guys. Um, I will say one little disappointment. I got this set called The Classics, uh, where they have really good books like Peter Pan, um, Treasure Island, The Jungle Book, things like that. However, I thought it was going to be the actual like original stories, but it was actually the Yodo originals, they call it. So they kind of made their own little version where basically it's, it's um, abridged, but I was a little disappointed, but at the same time, I try to see the good in it, which there is a lot of good in it. It really does capture his attention more because he is only six and those books can be pretty language heavy. And you know what? <laughs> see, this is something that makes me like really happy is that he, on the first day of school, Monday, he listened to the entire book of the Jungle Book. I mean, it wasn't that long. I want to say it was maybe about an hour long total because he would kind of take breaks here and there, but he finished the whole book and he loved it so much that he wanted to hear it again. He would just be in his room listening to it and then he'd go to another room and he just still had it. And I can tell that he feels like it's a special thing that is just for him. And I even tell him like, don't let your little brother who's not even two yet, don't let him touch it, put it somewhere where he can't reach it because it's very special and I don't want him to break it, and, you know? So I think he really feels like it's like his own special little you know, object that he can enjoy and he has to take care of. So um, yeah, I would say that's a huge hit as well. Okay, so now going to the actual school part. If you watched my first week of school planning video, which I used the School Nest notebook for, um, again, I'll put the cards up here if you wanna watch that. But I'm just going to kind of open that up so that way I can refer to it when I kind of go over how everything went. If you watch the end of that video, I do express a concern about how much writing there is just throughout all the different subjects, especially with language arts, because he has three different workbooks for language arts. He has a spelling vocab, 
a grammar and a writing. And then I do have two separate writing uh, programs. So there's the workbook. Well, there's a workbook and then there's the jot it down from Brave Writer, where it's more like creative writing, kind of more like projects. So when my son was in kindergarten, we had a schedule that really worked out so well for him. But see, in kindergarten, he was only doing phonics and writing, but it was like the mechanics of writing. He was just working on his penmanship. It wasn't like, you know, where he had to put his ideas on paper, but it was just those two. So what I did was I would do the language arts twice a week. It was Monday, Wednesday. Then I would alternate that with math. Math, we would do Tuesday, Thursday. But because now we're having spelling vocab, grammar, writing, I, I was going to try to do the same schedule where we could just do language arts Monday, Wednesday. But when I do that, I have to do like two days worth of work for Monday, you know, like Monday, Tuesday's worth work on Monday. And that would be way too much writing, way too much workbook going on. And even before Monday came around, it's like it hit me like, I can't do this. I'm not going to even try to make him do that. <laughs> So I changed it up. I decided I am going to just go with doing language arts every day, a little bit every day. And it's not even a little every day still because it is that spelling, grammar, writing, those three every day. So really it's like just enough before he gets too tired. And that's another thing I wanted to bring out is something that I learned after this week has gone by is that I was even thinking I can omit some of the workbook pages, even then, like even though we're only doing one little lesson a day, I was thinking, I don't think I'm going to do all the lessons. I think some days, let's just take one workbook day out of spelling. You don't have to do spelling today and maybe just do four uh, workbook pages worth of spelling a week, four workbook pages worth of grammar and four of writing and then just kind of like alternate that. I hope that didn't sound confusing. Maybe if I put it on paper, it'll sound a little more clear, but basically I just want him to do a little less than what he's doing right now. I think that will make it so that he's not getting burnt out with all the workbook and writing and, you know, thinking <laughs> it's just, it's a, it's, it's a big shift from kindergarten to first grade, all the workbook stuff he's doing, and in particular, his writing. Other than that, I do enjoy the curriculum that we chose for spelling, vocab, grammar, and writing. So for grammar, I was really looking forward to doing the first language lessons book with him. And so far, it's only oral. Um, there's no writing involved. And so I was really excited about that. And I was like, okay. And then, then there's some memory work and some poems in there, which I was thinking, I'm not going to make him memorize it, but we could still go over the poems. It's something still enjoyable to do is reading a poem. And surprisingly... I didn't, I'm not loving it as much as I thought I would. And when I say that, I mean, because based on the feedback that I'm getting from my son, he doesn't seem to be loving it as much because there's a lot of repetition. So for example, in the first few lessons, we repeat the, the definition of a noun to him like a few times and then we try to have him say it and like then even with the poem, we're supposed to read the poem a few times because we're trying to help have them memorize it, right? But he was like annoyed by it. <laughs> like, why are we repeating it so much? I get it. Like, I get, I heard what a noun is, you know, can we move on kind of thing? So, you know, I, it's just funny how every kid is different and you just adjust, right? According to how your kid is. And if they're they understand and you move on. It just makes sense. It's like common sense. You just, you don't have to keep going over it. Of course, if, see, if I was a kid's age, I would have needed all that repetition. I really would have. I would have needed more than three times said to me, knowing how I am. So maybe that's why I was so looking forward to this because I know how I would have been as a kid, but not him. He does not need all that. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a little bit, you know, surprisingly, he's just doing better with the workbook because the workbook, it kind of says the concept on the top of the page. 
it says what a noun is, and then it just gets right into the workbook part of it. He just fills in the workbook and he enjoys it. And he's doing great with that. So yeah, that's working great. And I'm I'm not saying that I we're gonna get rid of the the first language lessons book. I still wanna go through it. I feel like a week is not enough time to say if it's not gonna work out or not. So I'm gonna keep going with it and then we'll see how, you know, with time if it's something he just doesn't need or if it's still good, you know, enhancing the, the grammar lessons for him. Um, okay, so now with writing, everything's fine with writing. The workbook is fine. Um, jot it down. So far, it's, it's good. I mean, what I like about it is that there was like the reading involved with it. When I read Rapunzel, I really enjoyed reading that story. It was very different than, because I had never read the original you know, it's it's not as a uh, light. It was pretty interesting, and and he really enjoyed it too. So I just really enjoyed that part of it was reading the story, and him doing the narration. You know, part of it was pretty fun too. Now, same with math. If I'm gonna be doing language arts every day like that, like little increments every day. I have to do that with math. I can't do like two days worth of math for one day. It's just, that's just only how it worked in kindergarten to kind of off balance the language arts. So now I have to do like little increments of math. So this is our new schedule is <laughs> language arts and math every day. And then science and history, I'm still going to alternate. So science, I will still only do Mondays and Wednesdays. History, I'll only do Tuesdays and Thursdays. I just feel like it's better when you kind of break it up like that so that he's not doing all the subjects every day and it's just too much. So now, if you watch my video on planning the first week, I had mentioned in the video that I felt a little overwhelmed with the science because there was just so many things. It was like a big old list of things you can do for science. And I was like, I, I hope that it's not too much for him. And it's just funny how like we think something's going to be a certain way and then it ends up being different. But anyways, science was so enjoyable. It wasn't too much because I felt like this is how it felt. It felt like a buffet. It was like, a, like when you go out to a buffet and you see all this delicious food in front of you and you get to decide like what do you want if you don't like this certain type of food over here it's okay but there's plenty of others to choose from and that's how it felt with the science so with this science curriculum there's three main parts there's the reading there's the hands-on whether it's a demonstration or a project and then there's the writing those three and so i try to just pick one at least one thing from each of those categories and it worked out. I didn't have to do the whole reading list. I don't have to do all the, the activities or games or whatever, but it's all there for you. So if something stands out to you, you're like, oh, that seems really fun. Or that seems like something my child will enjoy. Let's do that one. And it was just so nice to have all those options. They even like give you YouTube videos that you can watch. And this is just from the first week, guys. I haven't even like looked at the other weeks, but just for the first week so far, it was just so enjoyable. I just really enjoyed it, you guys. I can't, obviously I'm so enthusiastic about it. So I very much recommend that curriculum for science. Uh, let's see, history. Whew, the enthusiasm is just, it keeps coming. <laughs> Okay, so history, I love it so much so far because it's it was only the introduction, you guys. So there wasn't much to it, but I could just tell it's gonna be so good. So we read the first few pages, which were the introduction pages, and basically it gave you the definition of what is history. It had you look at the encyclopedia, which had a lot of great pictures. It turned out, okay, so let me back up a little bit. So we did history on Tuesday, Tuesday morning. And I could not have planned this this good, you guys. Um, he opened up the Yodo card for, it was a series called The Magic Treehouse, I believe. The Magic Treehouse. And 
there, the first one was about dinosaurs. So he listened to that whole story that Tuesday morning and it, that piqued his interest on dinosaurs, okay? We even Googled some of the dinosaurs that they were naming in the story. And then when we get into history that day, in the encyclopedia, there was lots of pictures of dinosaurs. It's like prehistoric part of history. And he was just like, oh, this is amazing. Like, how do they know what they look like? And I'm like, they don't, they just guess, you know? <laughs> and he just was like really interested. And I'm like, wow, how could I have, I could not have planned it that well. How would I have known he would have listened to that story? And then, you know, so again, the Yodo player, it just went along with the lessons and it's just been so great. So yeah, that was history on the first day. And like I said, it was just an introduction. So we haven't really gone into like the real projects yet. But I know like next week, there's going to be like a cave painting type of thing that he can recreate. So he could really get that hands on experience with the lessons. And then there's also going to be a map that he'll fill out the continents for which I'm excited for. Oh, and so this is what I was going to get to just the first introduction part of the spine, the history quest book. The writing is so good, you guys. Whoever wrote it, it's like, it got me excited. Like, I want to learn about history now. The way it was written, like, you can put, you can travel. Oh, that's what I loved about it. It said you can travel anywhere in the world and learn about, you know, what people eat and learn about how people live. And they said, you can do that with history. You can travel anywhere in history. And I was like, oh my gosh, I want to do that. <laughs> It was so good. The writing was amazing and it was simple. The writing was like talking to an elementary student. It was not up going above anyone's head. It was, it was simple for him to understand and it was just really good and getting us excited for learning history because, you know, I think we all have been there when we're at school and it's like, history is so boring and like what is the purpose of history and this is kind of giving them that purpose of history is actually really fun it's really interesting we're all interested in people we're all interested in in different parts of the earth and in this case different time periods of history so a little rant there but okay now friday we basically because like i said we're doing language arts and math every day now so we did do the language arts and math no science or history because that's done for the week where that's only still going to be four days of the week two days each if that made sense i hope that made sense and then so friday after language arts and math it's just art and so we got to do the first lesson uh, which was a video and then he got to dabble with the watercolor crayons and so he basically just had to get an object and copy it now if you've watched any of my old videos, you'll know that my son is not, he doesn't really want to try, but that's why I got this art curriculum because I thought, well, maybe this can kind of help him out with that and get him to be a little excited about it. No, I don't think he needs to be good at everything. I'm not trying to make him like, no, you have to be good at art. But I just thought maybe this can pique a little bit of that interest, you know, if, if it helps him to improve at it, maybe he will figure that he enjoys it. It's just something that I want to try and see how it goes. But because he was supposed to outline, you know, on, on paper what the object looks like, he was actually getting frustrated because he tried to draw his toy car and it was not coming out perfect. It wasn't coming out the way he wanted. And so he was getting really frustrated. And I kept trying to encourage him, tell him you're doing good. That looks fine. Just do your best. It was not working. So before the tears can come, I just said, okay, this is why I got this book. I got him that drawing. I think it was 300 plus drawings of just everything. I pulled that out and I said, why don't you just pick something from here and you can try to copy that. So he decided, oh, I want to draw this leaf. I think because again, it looked really simple to draw. I said, perfect. Yes, draw a leaf. So as he was tracing it, I went outside and grabbed a leaf from one of our little plants that looked just like the little um, doodle leaf. And I was like, perfect, look, you can even look at this and look at how similar this looks to it so that he can feel like he's drawing an object, an, a real object. And so 
it's it's not perfect what he came up with but i was just so proud of him that he finished it and that he's getting um exposed to a new way of of art which is the watercolor crayons he's never used that before he was able to use that paintbrush so i feel like art was a big success as well we'll see how it goes again as time goes on oh and i forgot to mention uh, my mom got him this thing so it's not needed of course you, all you need is a table and the other su art supplies but she got him like this art station thing i don't know what you call it but it was really cute it's like he he looked like a true artist <laughs> like bob ross and you know i just taped the watercolor paper on there so that i can be like facing him right in front of him and he just looked at he was able to look at the screen um, the TV screen and then, you know, do his or look at his object and then copy it on there. So it looked so cute. And I'm just, I'm just so happy with how this week went overall. So that's basically the gist of how this week went. Uh, that was my long <laughs> ranty recap of how this week went. Um, I hope that you found anything that was brought out in this video as helpful in any way. It's just interesting how we can all kind of relate to each other and how we make our adjustments. We have our good days and we have our challenges and we're just all kind of in it together, you know. So I hope that you found some encouragement from this video as well. Thank you so much for watching as always. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and I'll try to do my best to respond and uh, I'll see you in my next video. Bye.